Hi guys, uh, wanted to focus on uh, the part of the experiment that is the control, uh, sometimes called the control group, and uh, constant in a uh, experiment. So the control group is a standard for comparison. Um, it's what you're going to compare the results to to see if it had an effect. Typically, it is the normal conditions. It's uh, the part of the experiment where it's what you normally do, or it's the the um, part of your experiment, the group that uh, doesn't get the uh, the special sauce, doesn't get the treatment. And we'll go through some examples of that today. Um, the constant or a constant is something that doesn't change in an experiment. It's what you keep the same uh, for all your experiment. And those are important uh, as well. Um, so a con uh, constants are important because um, if you change a bunch of things, you don't really know what what caused uh, the, the effect that you're looking for. So um, in, a, in an experiment, we want to keep as much constant as we can. So we only change one thing. Um, why is control uh, important? Well, an example of a situation here is in uh, Vermont. Um, they used to make windows at a diagonal. They were called witch windows. And um, the, the idea was that witches couldn't fly through the diagonal windows. So if you set up an experiment and you count the number of witches that fly through your witch window uh, in, in a month and you count zero witches, um, you, you know something's wrong. Um, you might be tempted to think, well, my witch window works because I didn't get any witches to go through. But the, the fact is you didn't have a control and you didn't have your normal uh, condition. So what you would do is want to compare the uh, the witch window to the amount of um, witches that fly through a normal window, which would be your control. And you would, of course, find uh, probably uh, zero witches flew through both. So the thing is, you would need that that control, that comparison to uh, to see uh, if the witch window really worked. Um, so going through an experiment where we find the, uh, the independent variable, dependent variable, control and constant. So let's say that uh, I'm growing my tomato plants and I've got caterpillars that are eating them. So the, the, the state uh, problem, step one, uh, state the problem is that caterpillars are eating my tomato plants and uh, I want to figure out how to stop them. Uh, step two, gather information. So I do some research on the internet and uh, I find out that people say that caterpillars don't like garlic. So I want to try this out for myself. So uh, I'm going to form a hypothesis uh, based on my internet research that if I spray tomato plants with garlic juice, then I'll see less caterpillars on them. Um, so the independent variable and dependent variable here, uh, we want to pick that out as practice. So my statement was, if tomato plants are sprayed with garlic juice, then there will be less caterpillars on them. Remember the if part of the of the statement of the hypothesis is the uh, is the independent variable so that would be the garlic juice and the dependent variable would be the number of caterpillars that are on my uh, tomato plants um, okay so um, if I just spray a tomato plant with garlic juice and I count the number of caterpillars on it, I'm not really setting up a good experiment because I don't have something to compare it to. In other words, I need a control. And the control is either the no treatment group or the normal situation. Well, in both of those cases, uh, since I don't normally spray my, my uh, plants with garlic juice, that would be my control. So what I want to do is have a plant that I do not spray with garlic juice, that will be my control. And then I'm going to compare uh, that with my, uh, gar my plant that's sprayed with garlic juice. So that's what I'm going to do. So again, the no treatment group is what's normally done, and that's the plant that's just sprayed with water. Um, so this would be my this would be my control, and this would be my uh, my experimental group. Um, let's skip through some of this. Um, all right. Now, when we set up an experiment, the one thing that we want to change is the garlic juice, and everything else we want to keep uh, we want to keep constant. So some examples of constants that we would want to have would be the same soil, the same amount of sunlight, the same amount of water, uh, the same type of plant, and the same temperature. Those are constants. Those are things we want to keep the same between the experiment, uh, between my two groups. Um, so going through a few more examples here, uh, 10 redwood trees are kept at increasing uh, humidity levels inside a greenhouse for 12 weeks. 
one plant is given 0% humidity and the height of the plants is measured once a week. So the, uh, the independent variable, what we're going to be changing directly, what we think is going to be the cause of the change is going to be the humidity level. Uh, and what we think is going to be the effect is, is going to be the height of the tree. So that is our dependent variable. So independent variable is the humidity and the dependent variable is the height of the trees. Uh, the control, uh, again, is always the tricky one to pick out, um, would be um, the normal or the no treatment example. So there really could be two controls here. Uh, it could be the 0% humidity because that's the no treatment or it could be the normal amount of humidity and um, you know what, what you, which one do you choose uh, both would be appropriate now things that we'd want to keep the same between these are our constants would be the same type of redwood tree um, the same amount of sunlight again similar to the last one the same soil um, and any number of things we want to keep the same because we only want to change one thing and that's the amount of humidity uh, another example, I've got four sunflowers and I'm watering with uh, pure water or different amounts of uh, salt water solution. After two weeks, we measure the height. Um, the independent variable, which again is the, the cause of the change, we think is going to be the amount uh, or the concentration of salt water. And the effect is going to be the height of the plant. Uh, so that is our dependent variable. So the, the cause is our independent variable, which is the concentration of salt water. And the effect, which is our dependent variable, would be the, the height of the plant. So the control, again, is what we normally do or the no treatment. Uh, we don't normally spray or add, put salt water in our, in our plants. That would be a good control. It's also the no treatment because the, the treatment is the salt solution. So if we don't add salt, that's, that's our uh, no treatment. So the control is the plant that just gets pure water. Uh, three constants, again, similar things that we want to keep the same um, would be the type of sunflower plant, the type of soil, um, the overall amount of water that we add, um, the amount of sunlight, any number of, of examples. Uh, another example here, we've got goldfish. Uh, one tank of goldfish is fed a normal amount of, of food, uh, which is once a day. A second tank is fed twice a day. A third tank is fed four times a day during a six-week study. The, uh, the amount of body fat on the fish is recorded daily. So the independent variable is, again, what we're changing directly. It's supposed to be the cause of the change, um, and that is going to be the uh, amount of food. The dependent variable, the, the effect, is going to be on the fish's body fat, and that is our dependent variable. Uh, the control is the part of the experiment that gets that gets the normal conditions, which here would be uh, the tank of goldfish that is fed the normal amount, uh, which is once per day. Uh, three constants we would want to have would be um, examples, uh, the same type of goldfish, um, the same uh, water uh, that they're swimming in, the same temperature of the water, um, and you could come up with many more of those. Okay, so that is uh, 